Hi, I'm Tim Eichelberger from the Bluetooth SIG. Today I will be giving you an overview of the Bluetooth testing process. The first step to have completed before the testing phase is to create a project and generate a test plan using the SIG's Test Plan Generator, or TPG. You will execute the test cases from your test plan using various methods including validated test systems for Category A, the PTS, or a user-defined test setup. The end goal and requirement is to achieve a pass for all the required tests in your test plan. Once you have completed your test plan, the last step in the testing phase is to upload your test declaration to the Bluetooth SIG. Once testing is completed, you are ready to finalize your design and complete the qualification process. Before we jump to the qualification phase, let's dive into the details of what makes up the Bluetooth testing requirements and highlight a few of the tools you can use to help when testing. The Bluetooth test requirements are made up of three main documents. The Implementation Conformance Statement, or ICS, is essentially the list of mandatory and optional features that you will choose from before generating your test plan. The test specification defines the test procedures and also contains a test case mapping table used to identify which test cases are required for which ICS features. The last document is the Test Case Reference List, or TCRL. The TCRL lists all of the available test cases that may appear in your test plan. You can download all of these documents from the Test Requirements section of Bluetooth.org. The mapping of ICS to test cases is a process involving a lot of manual work. For instance, in order to find the tests required for the Discover Alert status service, you first need to analyze the test case mapping table and then the test case reference list. Good news! The manual work involved in creating your test plan has been automated in the TPG. Using the TPG not only saves time, but also adds consistency to the test plans used by you and every other member. Now that you know the TPG exists, let's talk about the steps involved in creating your test plan. First, you create a project by selecting when you expect to complete qualification, assign a name for your project, and select the product type. Next, you declare the protocols, profiles, and or services along with the specific features that you want to support in your design. Last, you will run a consistency check to make sure your selections match the criteria and the test requirements. If the consistency check shows zero invalids, then it is time to generate your test plan. Now that you have a test plan, it's time to talk about running the tests. One important concept to understand is the test case categories. The most common categories are A and B. Category A tests must be performed using validated test equipment. For those Category A tests below HCI, they must also be performed at a recognized Bluetooth Qualification Test Facility, or BQTF. A reference to the BQTF list will be made available at the end of this training. For Category B tests, the member may define the test setup, but remember, evidence is still required. While you are busy running and passing the tests in your test plan, it is important to also collect testing evidence. Keeping enough evidence could become valuable if you are ever asked to reproduce the tests at a later time. The last step before moving on to the qualification and listing phase is to upload your test declaration. The test declaration is your completed test plan that tells the SIG you have passed all required tests. If you use the PTS, you can upload your test reports at this step also. Once you have uploaded your results, it is time to complete your qualification. Thank you for watching this online tutorial on Bluetooth testing requirements. 
be sure to check out the next chapter and keep an eye out for more videos in the future.